So hey everyone and welcome to another edition of Burton Ballers and the big topic of this week is that man again Romelu Lukaku after his performance against Crystal Palace where he only had seven touches of the ball. Yes that's right seven touches of the ball but and I'm gonna um, analyze whether is he that bad and how does he match up with all the other attackers that we've got at our disposal. Welcome to the Burton Ballers. Ain't got no time for no stallers. Yeah. We are the risers. We're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah. We're here to give you the news about your dear beloved blues. Yeah. So if you like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. Guys, before I start this video, I want to send out my heartfelt condolences to the family of Jamal Edwards. Jamal Edwards was a successful YouTuber um, of SBTV and he was a um, big Chelsea supporter. So he's going to be a big miss to everyone and I just um, want to let everyone you know, know that life is short. Life is really short, guys. So let's stop this argument about should... Lukaku go should is should have us replace him or whatever because you know sometimes when something like this happens you realize that there's more things important than football but with that said I'm here to talk about football and I'm here to talk about the man Romelu Lukaku and um, yesterday, or against Crystal Palace, not to yesterday, to, I'm doing this video in the evening of Sunday, but it's probably going to be out tomorrow, Monday. Um, and his performance wasn't great, let's be honest, you know. I'm one of his biggest supporters, but, um, you know, seven touches of a football, that's shocking. Um, I'll probably get seven touches in the crowd when the ball's kicked, kicked into the crowd. So, um, is it his fault, or... Is he not getting a service? And that's a lot of that. There's a lot of discussion about um, this, you know, doing the rounds, whether Lukaku needs to do more, whether he needs to get more service. To me, I think it's a bit of both. I don't think the team are playing to his strengths. I don't think people are passing to him. And just like if you look at um, to this caption that I'm going to show you now, we have three players who. Um, were famed for being superb strikers. You, you have Ian Wright, Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer. So as strikers, they should know what they're talking about. And they are saying that, you know, they uh, Chelsea have bought this um, asset and they're not playing to his strengths. But it's not only about playing to his strengths. It's also about him doing a bit more. And they acknowledged that as well. They said he's got to demand the ball more. He's got to be making more runs when things are not working for him. So for me, that, that that's what I need to see more of from him. You know, I know it's frustrating. I've played as a striker before. Sometimes you're making run after run after run after run. Your teammates are not finding you. So you just... Don't get frustrated. You have to carry on making those runs because that one killer pass may be the one that which you can latch onto and score a goal from. And sometimes you may have to just get more involved in the play by dropping a bit deeper, getting involved in the play a bit more. Um, we saw that with Harry Kane yesterday um, at when for Tottenham. He was sort of um, dropping deep sometimes, getting involved in, in the football because Tottenham were very much on the defensive. So the ball wasn't coming up to him quite a lot, but he was involved in other aspects of the game. But I'm hearing a lot of people... Uh, uh, calling for Kai Havertz to take his place. And while I mentioned Kai Havertz as well, he's one of the main culprits because that uh, footage, as I showed you, Kai Havertz a couple of times could play him in. He holds onto the ball too long and he doesn't really um, release the ball early enough. Quick releases and um, Lukaku can get more opportunities. Um, so let me just do something i've done some comparisons i've done comparisons like this before in the past and um this is a comparison that i'm doing with kai havertz lukaku timo Werner, and i've thrown in amanda broger as well because broger is obviously not playing for chelsea but he's playing for southampton so i just want to see how these guys stack up because 
a lot of you are calling for Kai Havertz to, to, to play up front. The reason we bought Lukaku in the first place was because Kai Havertz wasn't producing um, the goods up front. OK, he scored a goal in the Champions League final and he scored a winning penalty in the World Club Cup. A, a lot of people are giving him credit for that, but the same people who are giving him credit for scoring the penalty are not giving um, Lukaku credit for scoring two goals in open play to let us, um, he was he played his part in us winning the World Club Cup. But that's where agendas come into it because people don't care what he does, he's always going to be, every single mistake is going to be magnified with him. Whereas a lot of our other players, they're getting like a free pass, as it were. So I'm here. As a, um, as I said, um, one of the, the the lone voices in the Chelsea fan base, just to try and sort of um, even things up. I don't really try to go with the norm. I try to be my own person. And as I said, I'm not. Um, um, you know, a lot of people always think I'm defending Lukaku because I'm going on about it, but no, I'm just looking at it from a more objective eye. And so. <clears throat> For all those people with agendas out there with Lukaku, let me just uh, give you a few stats. Let me just bring up my my stats here. Um, where is it? Right. Okay. So, first of all, um, this is a comparison now between Havertz and um, Lukaku. Uh, yeah. What one thing I might have had before I start this this comparison is um, last season stats between for um, Havertz in you know, he had, I think it was twenty seven starts, four goals and two assists, and this is a guy you said you want leading the line. I'm not a Havertz hater before anyone thinks I am. I have always defended Havertz. I've always said Havertz need time. I've always said that I can see a player in him. I said that um, you know would we we would regret it if we let him go. Yeah, I, I still think at his age, there's a lot of improvement to be done. But um, if if you know, if we persevere with him, I think that he'll succeed. So that, let me get that out of the way before. So I don't have any sort of agendas against those people. But I'm just dealing with facts here. So that's, this is what I'm looking at. So if you look at the facts, right. And it's, it's quite a good comparison, actually, because both players have played the equal amount of games, 17 matches, 17 and um, actually, Havertz has started one more game than Lukaku. So all these people say, saying uh, Havertz has started ahead of Lukaku. Havertz has actually played more games than him. Um, and goals scored five for um, Lukaku. And this is all, this is league, by the way. I'm not taking all competitions. Five goals for Lukaku, two for Kai Havertz. So if Kai Havertz replaces him. Is it going to get any different? Probably not. I can't see the evidence. The evidence doesn't tell me that it's going to get any difference if, if, if Havertz plays up front ahead of Lukaku. Um, assists, one. Only one for um, Havertz. None at all for uh, Lukaku. But if you go on now, and uh, if we look at uh, passes, so um, obviously we've got the assist already, but key passes, 16 key passes, from Lukaku and only five for Havertz and a lot of times Lukaku could have had assists because he'd laid players off but they haven't been able to finish the finish so that's really you can't really blame Lukaku for that when he's sort of put people in and they've not hit the target or hit, hit the goalkeeper. Accurate passes uh, Havertz comes out away on top for that, 287 to 161. And that's probably because he gets involved in the play more, he drops deep and um, he's more active in, in, in the open play. Um, and But this is an interesting one. Although um, Havertz has had three more successful uh, tackle and um, dribbles than Hav uh, Havertz, 10 to 13. But when you look at the success rate, um, Havertz has only had a 48% success rate for dribbles, whereas um, Lukaku comes out on top with uh, 63%. And another thing with Havertz, what, and yesterday I saw it, um, he nearly lost us a goal with because he tries to dribble in dangerous areas. He lost the ball, and fortunately, Palace missed the opportunity. Last season, I think he did, I can't remember who it was against. Was it uh, West I can't remember the team where he lost the ball in a dangerous area. And we were we were punished for it. So um, he needs to get stronger. 
with when he's dribbling with the ball because sometimes he's easily brushed aside on the ball. So that's the comparison between Kai Havertz and Romelu Lukaku. Now, um, if I am now going to go on to uh, Timo Werner, because Timo Werner is another one where people are saying, yeah, but he works hard. That's why I don't, I don't really criticise him too much because when he's in the side, he contributes a bit more. But does he? Let's have a look. Right. Um, so again, we know that um, Lukaku's played 17 games and Timo Werner has played 11. So um, uh, Lukaku's played double the amount of games as, as Werner. He's only started six games this season, but he's only contributed with one goal and one assist. So if we go in now to the uh, key passes, only two key passes from Timo Werner to the 16 for uh, Lukaku. And then we're looking at accurate passes, uh, 104 accurate passes at a, a rate of 75%, which is a slight, a slightly higher average than, than, than Romelu Lukaku. And um, <clears throat> if we look at successful dribbles, um, only five successful dribbles, and his dribbling rate is awful, 31%. That's that, that's half of um, the success rate of, as, as, of Romelu Lukaku. And so I don't see what he offers apart from running fast and taking people away because his, his ball control is not as good as uh, Lukaku's, contrary to what some people believe. Finally, I'm going to be looking at um, Amanda Broja. And what we've got to take into account of Amanda Broja is he's playing for a Southampton team with less pressure than he would be if he was playing for Chelsea. And because he's playing for Southampton, because I know a lot of people are saying we would prefer to have Amanda, Amanda Broja in the team because they're looking at his stats at Southampton. But what we've got to realise is when he plays for Southampton, teams do not play a low block against Southampton. And Southampton's a team where um, other oppos opponents go and think they could, they got a chance of winning. So they're going to be going to attack. They're not going to go to try and defend and hold out and try and get a, a, a goal on the break. 90% of the teams we play against Chelsea, that's the way they set up. They play a low block defensive counter-attacking game, which makes it harder for our, our strikers to um, get goals. So when you're playing a higher line, and so that, that allows you to, you know, that allows the strikers to be able to run in behind and get more joy. So this is the way that, um, if you look at Southampton, I've seen them play a few games this season, and a lot of times uh, the teams defending against them are playing with a high line. So Amanda Broja has got a lot more um, room to run into. So you've got to bear that in mind. But um, he's played actually he's played more games than Lukaku. So he's had um, 21 matches to to Lukaku 17, and he's had one more start as well. He scored one more goal. And I said, you know, we don't just look at it, but OK, he scored more goals, more goal, so he's a better player, or he, he will do, be better in Chelsea for the um, for reasons I've explained earlier. But actually, anyway, he scored one more goal. He's had no assists. Um, and if we look at uh, accurate passing, 143 accurate passes to 161 for Lukaku. So if you're going to be frustrated by um, Lukaku for giving the ball away a lot, Amanda Broja gives the ball away an awful lot because his passing success is only at 58%. You know, I'm not being critical of him. I'm just, just putting context into this because this guy's young. He's learning his game. And so that's why it's good for him to go out and learn so he can learn his trade. So he's not going to be coming to the, into this Chelsea side and expect, he's expecting instant success. You're going to be as frustrated with him as you would be with, with Lukaku. Because I know, you know, I know people say, yeah, he's young, I'm going to give him a chance. But people didn't give Tammy Abram a chance, let's be honest. You know, they're, they're saying it after you've gone, but when he was here, he was one of these guys that, that people used to take the mickey out of and say that he's not good enough for Chelsea. So, grass, grass is always greener, as I always say. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, successful dribbles, 24. That's a quite a lot. So great um, a number of successful dribbles by Amanda Broja, Amanda Broja to, compared to Lukaku's 10. But if you had to look at his successful dribble rate, it's only at 50%. So um, Lukaku's got a higher dribble su uh, success rate. You know, um, Broja does a lot more dribbles, so he's more direct running with the ball. But again, it, not all of them are successful. Only half of them are successful. Again, guys, are you prepared to, is he going to have that same um, opportunity to take those dribbles at, at Chelsea? 
I want to say, as I said before, I'm not dismissing him. I really rate him and I wish that he had stayed this season. I think he could have done a job for us coming on and developing at Chelsea. But, you know, if anyone thinks he's going to be the instant success, I don't think so. I still think he's got a lot of learning to do, a lot of growing to do before he becomes that, that standout striker. So there you have it, guys. I've laid out the stats there. And um, as you can see, this is a problem with all our strikers, not just Lukaku. But for some reason, Lukaku is a scapegoat. I know a lot of people are saying because, you know, they're using the excuse of the interview. But let's be honest, before the interview, there were people who were waiting for him to fail. And, you know... Even I don't even if this interview hadn't come out and he wasn't scoring, I think he would be getting unfair criticism. Yeah, is he is he producing enough as a one hundred million pound striker? No, he's not producing enough for the, for that sort of money. But we've got to remember as well, Kai Havertz was seventy two million, so that's still a lot of money. And the product coming from the, him isn't worthy of a seventy two million striker yet. And what what we've seen from um, Timo Werner, okay, he costs half of the amount, but it's still big money that we've we, we've forked out for him. Again, he's not producing the the numbers neither. So let's be objective, guys. When we're criticising, let's not not scapegoat one player. Let's look at ev all the players and look at it as none of them are so, at, at the moment succeeding. Is it a striker problem? Is it a personnel problem? Is it the fact that our midfield behind are not producing the um, enough assists for these players? Do we need to address that situation? Is it because we're not the, we, the the personnel on the wide are not the right personnel to get the best out of our our attacking options? We don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. And I'm not the manager. It's up to Thomas up to Thomas Tuchel to figure this out, guys. So what do you think? I know some of you are not going to agree with me and say that I'm making excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm just laying the facts bare and it's for up to you to discuss now. So stick your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what your opinions are. So guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on all post notifications so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.